Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 2.1, Basics of Functions and Their Graphs. Before you venture into this chapter, it's worth mentioning for those of you who are taking this course en route to taking calculus, a calculus sequence, or beyond, that the majority of what you do in calculus is based on functions. So as we start developing the concept of a function, laying out some definitions, doing some examples, drawing some graphs, etc., etc., keep in mind that all of these concepts will be applied in calculus over and over and over. So let's begin. First video, finding the domain and range of a relation. If we're going to find the domain and range of a relation, I owe it to you to at least define those, to define those three terms, relation, domain, and range. A relation is really simple. It's a set of ordered pairs. For example, negative three comma nine is an ordered pair. The word pair is obvious, ordered, meaning that if I reverse the order, it's considered a different pair. So 9, negative 3 would be a different ordered pair than negative 3, 9. Sometimes ordered pairs are listed in parentheses with a comma in between them, which sort of look like interval notation, but um, they're not. Whether or not something like this represents an interval or an ordered pair is based on context. In this context, it's an ordered pair. Now, ordered pairs can also be listed in a table. For example, in this table, in the left column, I have the name of a person. And in the right column, I have the name of one of their siblings. Yes, this is me. Yes, these are my brothers. Yes, these are other family members and their siblings. So that's all a relation is. It's a set of ordered pairs. Now, these are not the only ways that we can express relations. Uh, as we go through this series of videos, I'm going to show you two more ways to represent relations. If you have a relation, the domain is the set of first coordinates in a relation. And it's worth mentioning that relative to an ordered pair, each half of it is called a coordinate, generically first coordinate and second coordinate. Now, you may already be, be familiar with functions and graphs and things and probably know that these are also called the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, or just x and y for short. Generically, that's okay, but the names x and y are completely arbitrary. If you're looking at a function or a relation in a context, you might choose different variables. For example, you might want to gauge uh, the journey of a vehicle from point A to point B, by documenting how far it's, how long it's traveled and how far it's traveled. For example, after one hour, it's traveled 30 miles. After two hours, it's traveled a total of 45 miles. Well, if my numbers represented time and distance, then instead of calling them X and Y, I could call them T for time and D for distance. So the names of the coordinates in terms of variables are fairly arbitrary but generically they're referred to as the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, or even more generic, first coordinate and second coordinate. The domain of a relation is the set of first coordinates in a relation. The range is the set of second coordinates in a relation, or in terms of x and y, the domain is the set of x-coordinates in a relation, and the range is the set of y-coordinates in a relation. So for each of these relations, let's list the domain and range. Now, because the domain and range by definition are sets, just like a relation by definition is a set, sometimes you have the option of writing that set in, a, in, in braces, excuse me. So for example, in this first example, if we want to, if we want to write the domain, because it's a set, we might have the option of writing it in set notation. In this case, we can. All I need to do is to list the first coordinates. 
and the first coordinates in these seven ordered pairs from left to right are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. A fairly easy task. The range is just as easy. The range is the set of y coordinates, excuse me, the set of second coordinates. So for each ordered pair, we just write down its second coordinate. The first second coordinate is 9. The second second coordinate is 4. And by the way, these numbers do not have to be in any particular order. The third second coordinate is 1. The fourth second coordinate is 0. The fifth second coordinate is also 1, which raises the question, do we write it again? The answer is no. When you're writing a set of elements, you do not write an element more than once. So this one is already represented in the set, as is this 4, as is this 9. So our range is a lot smaller than our domain for this particular relation, but that can happen. Speaking of this particular relation, you might be asking yourself, is there a reason I paired these numbers together? There is, but the definition of a relation does not require an actual relationship between the first and the second coordinates. Just looking at these pairs of numbers, can you tell how I paired them together? More specifically, can you tell what I did to the first coordinate to turn it into the second coordinate? What can you do to negative 3 that turns it into 9, but that same move also turns negative 2 into 4, negative 1 into 1, etc., etc.? The answer is, to get the second coordinate, I squared the first coordinate. But again, the definition of a relation doesn't require there to be an actual relationship between the first and second coordinates. In this case, there was. The ordered pairs could just be completely random. Let's move to the second example, where we have the names of some people and the names of their siblings. What is the domain of this relation? Well, this one's a little easier to extract the domain and range. When it's in a table, the domain is in the first column and the range is in the second column. The only thing we have to do is make sure to not write entries twice. For example, Chris, me, is the first first coordinate, but I'm also the first second, excuse me, the second first coordinate. Let me try that again. I'm the first first coordinate, but I'm also the second first coordinate. And then the remaining names, well, they're not all different. There's Julie, but she only shows up once. Angie, she only shows up once. But Sarah shows up twice. And in case you're wondering, wife, Sister-in-law, sister-in-law. But what's the range? Are there any names duplicated in the range? It doesn't look like there are. So if I wanted to write the range for this relation, I would have to write all six names. Scott, Jason, older brother, younger brother, Jimmy, my brother-in-law. Jennifer, Scott's wife's sister, Aaron, or for those who watch Key and Peel, A. A. Ron. Aaron is my brother's wife's brother, and Joanna. who is my brother's wife's sister. So finding the domain and range is really easy when your relation is written as a set of ordered pairs or as a table.